MS is an inflammatory and degenerative disease. But what exactly is inflammation? Are there different kinds of inflammation? And what can we do about it? In today's video, I'm going to talk about inflammation, what it is, what causes it, and share some tips on how we can lower inflammation that may lead to better health. Hello, my dear friends, and welcome. I'm glad that you're here. Before we jump into the video, if you enjoy content like this, could you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel? I really appreciate it because it helps the channel and will help it to reach more people. Thanks. I received a question from a viewer, and by the way, I love hearing from you. Please leave me your thoughts and reactions in the comments below my videos. They asked, have you done, or would you consider doing, please, a video on inflammation? It's a term that often gets mentioned, but to be honest, I really don't understand it. It doesn't seem to be the same as the inflammation that occurs when, for example, a cut is healing. Thanks so much for the question, Grinch4567. To be honest, I only had a superficial understanding of inflammation and how it works in our bodies, too. So I did a bit of digging, and here's what I found. According to Tabor's Medical Dictionary, inflammation is an immunological defense against injury, infection, or allergy marked by increases in regional blood flow, immigration of white blood cells, and release of chemical toxins. Inflammation is one way the body uses to protect itself from invasion by foreign organisms and to repair wounds to tissue. Clinical hallmarks of inflammation are redness, heat, swelling, pain, and loss of function of a body part. Systemically, inflammation may produce fevers, joint and muscle pains, organ dysfunction, and malaise. Redness, heat, swelling, pain, and loss of function. Remember the loss of function part for later in the video. According to the Yale School of Medicine, inflammation is the body's natural way of defending itself against tissue damage as well as against viruses and bacteria. It's a defensive response governed primarily by the immune system, which dispatches white blood cells to the affected sites, resulting in redness and swelling or symptoms such as a fever. Our bodies see a virus or a bacteria or an injury, and it goes to work to try to fix it and defend itself. It sends out the first responders, the white blood cells, to trap the bacteria or virus or to help heal the injury. There are three general types of inflammation. Acute inflammation that lasts a few days, subacute inflammation lasting two to six weeks, and chronic inflammation that can last for months or years or a lifetime. Examples of acute inflammation are a cut or when we get a sliver or maybe when we twist our ankle. There is tissue damage and perhaps bacteria. Our immune systems act immediately and the area becomes warm, red, swollen, and may ooze. A subacute inflammation is between acute and chronic inflammation, and it may be associated with injuries that take longer to heal, like that twisted ankle. If it's a bad sprain, the inflammation may take longer to subside, or if we have a virus, or if there's scar tissue from a wound that's healing. Chronic inflammation can be involved in diseases such as Alzheimer's disease, asthma, cancer, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, or other autoimmune diseases. Our body continues sending inflammatory cells even when there's no outside danger. It's confused in sending out the first responders that are then attacking our own tissues. In the case of MS, it's the myelin, the protective coating on our nerves. According to the National MS Society, multiple sclerosis is a chronic inflammatory disease of unknown etiology that involves an immune-mediated attack on the central nervous system. And the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation of America states that, with MS, damaging immune system cells, microphages, and other lymphocytes are able to break through the blood-brain barrier and enter the central nervous system where they begin their attack on the myelin. This creates inflammation along the nerves where the myelin is being damaged. So inflammation is definitely part of MS, but they don't know what causes our immune system to attack and cause the inflammation. Going back to the original question, is MS inflammation the same as when we get a cut? Yes, our immune system is signaled to send out white blood cells and messengers to attack foreign invaders and or protect an area, 
where the difference comes in is depending on what the immune system is going after. Our immune systems are amazing and they have memories. Some of our cells will remember a virus or a bacteria and be on the lookout for it, such as when we get the flu or the flu vaccine. The next time those cells see the flu, they mount a defense and we are less likely to get that strain of the flu again. Our immune systems will send out different cells to address different threats. So different cells will respond to the flu or a cut or a sprain. With chronic inflammation, these cells may accidentally attack our own healthy cells. In the case of MS, it's our myelin that surrounds our nerves. According to Regina Berkowitz, an MS neurologist in California who was interviewed on Neurology Live, although we don't necessarily see the actual tissues in MS, if we were to have the opportunity, we would see that it has swelling, some edema, and the most important portion of inflammation, meaning impairment of function. She went on to say, we can't see the inflammation in MS other than what we see on MRIs. We can't see or appreciate the temperature of the tissue because it's under the cranium. That is a key point. We can't see the inflammation or the impairment because it's in our brains, which are covered by our skulls and our spinal columns, which are also concealed. If you'd like to see the segment of the video with Dr. Berkowitz, I will put it in a link below. So what can we do about chronic inflammation? It turns out there's a lot we can do and reducing inflammation may help reduce our symptoms and may alter the course of our MS. One of the biggest things that we can do to reduce inflammation is by eating an anti-inflammatory diet and avoiding foods that are linked to inflammation. Some of the foods that are anti-inflammatory are dark green leafies like spinach, collard greens and kale, and vegetables like cabbage and broccoli. Beans and whole greens are also great. And the colorful berries, they're fantastic. These foods are high in fiber, antioxidants, and phytochemicals that help reduce inflammation. Some foods can increase inflammation, such as refined carbohydrates and processed foods like chips, sodas, sugary breakfast cereals, luncheon meats, frying foods, and candy. Try to stick with whole real foods as much as possible. The next way to reduce inflammation is avoid being overweight. Carrying extra weight around is associated with our bodies being in an inflamed state. In this study from this year, they concluded that obesity in newly diagnosed patients with MS is associated with higher disease severity and poor outcome. Obesity management could improve clinical outcomes of MS. Trying to keep our weight down will help reduce inflammation overall and help us to be healthier. Next is smoking. Inhaling smoke and chemicals into our lungs, whether it's from direct smoking or secondhand smoke, can be inflammatory. Cigarette smoking causes diverse changes in immunity that lead to heightened constitutive inflammation. It's true, smoking leads to increased inflammation and it has been shown to be associated with worsening of MS. Some studies show that tobacco smoking increases the risk of multiple sclerosis onset by 50% and increases disability progression by about 55%. That is shocking. Another way to tame overall inflammation is to get enough sleep. Sleep deprivation is associated with markers of inflammation such as increases in inflammatory molecules. When we sleep, our blood pressure falls and our blood vessels relax. When we don't get adequate sleep, our blood pressure can remain high and that may lead to, to inflammation. Another great thing happens when we're sleeping too. Our bodies clean house. They flood the brain with cerebrospinal fluid and this cleans away beta amyloid proteins which are associated with brain cell damage. The final tip that I'd like to share that may help lower inflammation is to reduce stress. Being in a constant state of stress or at increased levels of stress on a regular basis is associated with increased inflammation. Systematic reviews and meta-analysis of available data on the relationship between inflammation and depression and fear and anxiety disorders support the notion that these stress-related conditions are associated with increased systemic inflammation. Some of the ways that we can reduce stress are to exercise, get out in nature, 
practice mindfulness or meditation, and to talk with a therapist. MS is an inflammatory and degenerative disease. By reducing inflammation, we may decrease symptoms and we may decrease the possibility of progression of our disease. What will you do to decrease inflammation? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have other tips to reduce inflammation, let me know about those in the comments too. To see more on lifestyle changes to help manage MS, watch these videos next. Please like, subscribe, and subscribe to my newsletter where I share more on living well with MS and some delicious anti-inflammatory recipes. Until next time, be well.